On Monday, I did a video about how to become an astronaut. If, of course, flying in an airless void at 10 times the speed of a speeding bullet sounds like a good time to you. I talked about NASA's astronaut program and their qualifications if you wanted to join them, as well as the qualifications of other international space programs around the world. I also talked about how your chances of actually becoming an astronaut are really small, because I'm the destroyer of dreams. But I also talked about why the launch of the Crew Dragon was a big deal and how having multiple rides to space is going to lead to cheaper and more available space flight options. I also did a hilarious sketch about the movie Space Camp, which I think a lot of people didn't get because they didn't exist back when that movie came out and I watched it over and over again as a kid. All around me are familiar faces. Now that was cool and you should definitely go watch it if you missed it, but what I left out of that video was really possibly the most significant contributing factor if we're ever going to really become a spacefaring civilization, and that's space tourism and space construction. So if you really want to go to space, but all the different space agencies around the world don't think that you've got the right then fret not, because in the near future there's going to be a lot more ways to get into space. And it's going to happen a lot faster than you think. Especially space tourism. Seriously, there's a lot of stuff that's about to happen in space tourism over the next few years. More rise to space means more potential for these state agencies around the world to put their astronauts up into space. But if you live in one of these countries and you don't think you've quite got the right there's always space tourism. And there's a lot about to happen with space tourism. Hearing the term space tourism sounds like some far future thing, but it's actually been going on for almost 20 years through a company called Space Adventures. Dennis Tito became the first space tourist in 2001 through Space Adventures, and they've launched seven people total on the Soyuz capsule, but when the space shuttle program ended in 2011, they kind of had to stop doing that because the Soyuz manifest was just too full to accommodate them. But now that there are extra launch providers, Space Adventures is getting back into the game. In fact, they've already signed a deal with SpaceX to put four people up to the ISS on the Crew Dragon in late 2021. And SpaceX signed a similar deal with a company out of Houston called Axiom Space to put four space tourists up to the ISS again in late 2021. But Axiom is really interesting because they actually signed a deal with NASA to put up an entire module to the ISS just for space tourists. I feel like this needs to be repeated. There's going to be a module on the International Space Station specifically to house space tourists. This is planned to happen by 2024, but Axiom wants this to just kind of be the first step to launching their own private space station later on. So yeah, just in case you weren't keeping score, there are now more space tourism flights booked for 2021 than have ever happened before now. And there's also another company worth mentioning called Orion Span. They're working on their own private space station or a private space hotel, if you will. And if you have $80,000, you can reserve your spot right now. They do take Bitcoin. Not to mention the whole Tom Cruise shooting a movie in space thing. But obviously this is rich people stuff. The price of these trips is still gonna be in the millions, so if you really want to get up to space but you're on more of a budget, there's also suborbital options. So the new Shepard, I don't know, I really don't know what they're waiting on at this point. They've tested it 12 times, they've built four different vehicles, they've never had a problem, they've all gone flawlessly. I don't even know what else there is to test at this point, but yeah, they're taking their time. I mean, it's their motto, it's right there in the name. But yeah, still no clue when they're gonna actually put some people on the new Shepard, but it should happen in the next couple of years. And then there's Virgin Galactic, which has been just as frustrating to follow. They were actually one of the first out of the gate because they teamed up with uh, Burt Rutan and Scale Composites, who won the Ansari X Prize in 2004 with this particular spaceship design. Now granted, they had a snag in 2014 when their first ship crashed and it killed one of the two crew members on board. But their second ship, the VSS Unity, has been coming along really well. They've done full suborbital flights in 2018 and 2019. They just actually last month completed a glide test. And I couldn't find a timeline for their first real uh, commercial flights, but they've already sold 600 tickets at $250,000 a pop. And they've already set up this gigantic spaceport they call Spaceport America in New Mexico. So yeah, they're, they're clearly very gung-ho about this. And you know what? Maybe they've got a right to be. A recent UBS report said that by 2030, the space tourism industry is going to be worth $3 billion, and that the entire space sector by 2040 is going to be close to a trillion dollars. And you know what, seriously, researching this video has gotten me really pumped about all this. Like, it's really starting to feel like everything that's happened over the last 10 years has just kind of been laying the groundwork for just some crazy stuff that's about to happen. You know, we figured out how to make money by launching satellites, but putting crew up in space has always been really expensive and it was always done at a loss. So figuring out how to get people into space and make it profitable, even if it's only for rich people, it's a good start. 
But it might not be tourism that puts the most people in space. That might be construction. You know, tourism is just the first step to creating a human infrastructure in space. What ultimately might put the most people up there is something closer to what Jeff Bezos wants to do by putting heavy construction into space. Look, Elon Musk has his crazy Mars dreams. Jeff Bezos has the idea of O'Neill cylinders and rotating habitats. He sees a day when we can take advantage of the microgravity in space to be able to actually do construction projects that you wouldn't be able to do as easily down here on Earth. And in order to do that, he needs super heavy lift capacity, which is why they're building New Glenn. Like everything else, Blue Origin is taking their time with New Glenn, but believe you me, it is going to be a beast, and it's going to significantly lower the cost of getting heavy stuff up into space. Of course, this is happening at about the same time that SpaceX is putting the Starship together that also has super heavy lift capacity, and don't laugh, there's also the SLS. So yeah, just like the upcoming crew options are gonna lower the cost of getting private astronauts up into space, these heavy lift options are gonna lower the cost of construction in space. So yeah, thinking 10 or 20 years down the road, there may be a rush for construction jobs in space. Now granted, these are gonna be a bit more high level than your average construction job, so thinking ahead might be a good idea to get an engineering degree. Or maybe most of the work will be done by robots and the only people that'll be up there are people who can service the robots. So, you know, getting some experience and some education in that might be a good way to go. Now, if I may wax philosophical for just a second, you know, I've talked a lot in this video about the economics of space flight, how we can lower the cost of getting people up there and all that. And that's all very important, obviously, but there's also something else that this democratization of space might bring about, something a bit more ethereal. And that's the overview effect. The overview effect is the term given to the shift in perspective that many astronauts feel after they go up into space. You know, there's something about looking down at the Earth from above. And there's no national boundaries, there's no conflicts, there's no bitterness, there's no divisiveness like we always see in our daily lives, especially online. And, and then there's looking the other direction, out at the vastness of space and realizing that Earth is this tiny, fragile cradle of life hanging in the infinite void, protected from the darkness by only a paper-thin sliver of atmosphere. It's the understanding that we're all in this together and that this is our home and it's our only home and we have a responsibility to it and to each other. I feel like the world would be a better place if more of us had that perspective. And the more people that can go up there and especially people who can translate it to the rest of us so we can experience it along with them, the more that idea can spread around. I don't know, I just, I think the world could use a lot more of that these days. And there's also something to be said about how inspiring it is to see people go up into space. And the more people we see doing that, the more it inspires us to want to do the same. And part of that is inspiring future generations to want to go up into space. After all, they're the ones that are going to be carrying this torch forward. Obviously not with an actual torch. That would, that would be bad in space. And one group that's working on inspiring younger people is a group called Back to Space. And they're actually teaming up with some former astronauts, including some Apollo astronauts, to create online content and events to try to inspire younger people. There's some friends of mine, they're doing some great stuff. They helped me out with this video and I'm putting some links to their stuff down in the description. So if your biggest dream is to go to space someday, but you still just don't quite have the right stuff or NASA, then fret not because maybe someday you'll be able to stay in a space hotel or get a job in space construction. The point is the sky's no longer the limit. Just like 150 years ago when the frontier was opened up by transcontinental railroads, today the infrastructure for the space frontier is being created right before our eyes. And this train is just getting started. Metaphors! So hey, thanks for watching. This video is supported by the wonderful community of Answer Files on Patreon, and I'm actually way behind on saying to the names for people who have joined, so let me murder some names real quick. On this Thursday video, we got Mark Ryan, Joseph B. Stokes, Megan Evans, Alexander Cougar, James Essex, Ro Onyx, Andrew King, Pixie Smith, Sherry Hussey, uh, Lance Fay, Juliana Davis, C CSA Dimmerberg, sure. Uh, Paul Disryu, uh, Matt McKee, Risa Bazile, uh, Cameron Arnett, Jared Sparks, and Luke Mahoney. Ugh, that was a mouthful. Thanks a lot, you guys. If you would like to join them, get early access to videos, and just join an awesome community, as always, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. T-shirts available at the store at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. There's this one that's called, that's called the Next Step Astronaut. There's also one where he turns into Iron Man. All kinds of fun stuff. There's also mugs, hoodies, posters, stickers, you name it. It's all cool. You can go to answerswithjoe.com slash store. Find it there. Thank you very much. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video. Google thinks you'll like that one or any of the others with my face on it down there. And if you enjoy them, I do invite you to subscribe. We come back with videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening week. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.